Hey, what's up guys? And in this video, I'm gonna be telling you about the best budget wide angle lens that you can use for night photography to get those epic night shots and also some of the problems with it, what you need to know before you buy it. All that coming up. Hey everybody, David Johnson here and welcome into this channel where we talk landscape photography, everything you need to know to improve your photographs through online video. So if you're into landscape photography at all, if you wanna learn more, if you wanna get better, we're gonna help you do that on this channel. So be sure and subscribe and ring the bell for future videos, how you can learn how to improve your photographs. And in this video specifically, we're talking about the best wide angle lens that you can buy on a budget for your night photography. Now, what lens is that? That is the Rokinon 12 millimeter F2 lens. And this lens is pretty cheap, coming in right at around $300. Now, for all of the photographs that you're seeing on your screen right now were shot with this lens, but it was also shot in combination with the Sony a6000 mirrorless camera, a setup that's gonna really get you in at around $500 to $600 total. So this is a pretty cheap setup, but pretty fantastic professional results. So I photographed with this lens and the camera setup for about five years and really got a lot of good results for night photography. And this is really the APS-C setup for this system. If you're shooting full frame, there's also a different setup that you can use that's gonna give you the exact same results and a high quality lens option with a camera option. The lens that you're gonna to wanna to get if you are a full frame shooter that's very very comparable to this lens is the Rokinon 24 millimeter f1.4 lens. Now, if you'll notice the f-stop on these lenses is pretty small in numerical value, and that's because a smaller number of f-stop is going to mean a wider range of aperture that you get, a wide aperture ring that's going to let in a lot of that light and collect the light of the Milky Way that's shining. Something settings like f2, ISO 800, and a 20 second shutter speed is gonna be perfect for any night photography and Milky Way photography because it's really gonna let in a lot of that light and focus on the Milky Way galactic core that you see so often in the Milky Way shots. Now, not only that, but night photography can be stuff like star trails too. So if you're photographing star trails, something like the same f2, ISO 800, a 30 second exposure and set your camera to continuous shooting and using a cable release is going to allow you to constantly take photos and then stack those together later in Photoshop. Click on the card on your screen showing up right now to see exactly how to do that. Those are some of the benefits of lenses like these from Rokinon that are really going to come in at a cheaper price point that are going to help you save cash and get out to these locations and shoot these images. But the price you save on buying one of these lenses is really gonna help you out in that scene. Not only that, but doubling down on this lens, you can take some amazing landscape shots with it too. Again, I used this for several years when I was starting out in landscape photography and got some pretty cool shots of the landscape scene and then would use the same setup to go out that night and photograph night sky photography. So this lens is really helpful, but there are also some drawbacks to this lens that you need to be aware of before you buy it. Number one, these lenses are only manual focus and manual aperture adjustment. So if you're wanting to photograph with something like this, if you also do like portrait photography, if you want that nice bokeh effect in portraits, this is an absolute garbage lens for portrait photography because of the constant manual focus. There's no autofocus feature to this lens. It's only manual focus. So as your subject would move around within the scene, it would be really difficult to constantly, you know, adjust the manual focus on this and adapt to what was going on with your subject. Same goes true for wildlife photography. Gonna be really hard to constantly move this focus ring and find the right focal distance to have that tactile sharp focus within your scene. So the difference here for landscapes is your subjects aren't moving around. You can spend a lot of time waiting on the right conditions, getting your focus exactly tack sharp, and then photographing. Same goes for night sky photography as well. So that's not a drawback for landscapes having manual focus. So if you are only shooting landscapes or night sky photography, again, a winner for you in that scenario. 
Now let's talk about the manual aperture ring that comes on this lens. It's a really cool feature and I like using it a lot because you can easily just switch around this lens and get the right aperture that you want for it, which is exactly what you want for night sky photography because you can set this in place, you can set your manual focus in place, lock that in and not worry about if you had it accidentally set to autofocus and then when you go to hit the shutter, your camera searches for that autofocus and then all of a sudden you don't know where your cameras are focusing because it's night and it's dark and you get into all these situations where you don't know what's going on you're having difficulty seeing exactly what you're photographing and it's a huge mess when you just set all this to manual you have full control over it and nothing really gets bogged down within your infield workflow of finding those things within your scene that you can photograph now another thing that i have noticed with this lens is that one of the things that you have to do for focusing on the night sky is that you have to set this when you are focusing to something like focus to infinity. Now the infinity point on this lens is a little bit off. It's not exactly on the infinity logo that's on the, your lens, which makes it easy to find if it was correct. But on this lens in particular, I found that it kind of ranges from just to the left of that all the way to just to the right of the line. So you really have to figure out during the daytime before you go out at night where that exact point on your focus to infinity that it is. I think it's a really good idea to mark that with a grease pencil, maybe set up just like a silver Sharpie point, maybe make a dot on your lens to exactly where that is. And that's a really easy workaround of not having the focus to infinity exactly on the little emblem that's on the lens, but you can make it yourself so that you know what you're doing whenever you do go out and find whatever you wanna photograph in the night sky. So those are all things to be aware of, all things to consider, and considering all things for landscape and night sky photography, that this is a phenomenal lens for those situations. Again, broken on 12 millimeter F2. If you're shooting full frame though, the 24 millimeter F1.4. I'm not sponsored by Rokinon, I just use these lenses a lot in my landscape photography and absolutely love them and highly suggest them if you're looking to save some cash and get out and shoot some epic photos.